Okay, uh, today I'm going to do a review, and today I'm going to review Iron Man Extremis. This is basically one of the first books you should read after you watch the Iron Man movie, if you haven't. If you haven't, read this before Iron Man, if you want, or watch the movie. Because everything's better when you don't have to read first. <laughs> this is uh, basically uh, one of the times I wanted to reboot it. Um, they tried to do a big relaunch uh, in 2005. This is the first six issues of the 2005 ongoing, which is canceled now. They have a different ongoing. Marvel does it all the time. I'm still waiting for them to do the renumbering. Not because I want them to, just because I know it'll happen. This is done by Warren Ellis, Arnie Greenoff. Uh, I think I'm saying his name. It's a foreign name. I'm sorry. It's kind of hard to say. Anyone can mispronounce it. And this story begins with uh, apparently three guys in Texas got their hold of something called the Extremis a st uh, program, virus, or whatever the hell it is. And they inject it into one of them, and he becomes sick and kind of really horrible. And you realize the extremist. The idea of the extremist program, Warren Ellis has said, is to essentially take the abilities a human can do and essentially go beyond what the human body can do. Hack the brain and create, make yourself a being just, you know, su not even superhuman, an ultra human. And they use it. The guy's name is Malin. I uh, don't really have a better name than that. I don't remember any. I reread this a, like a week ago, but my that name doesn't slide in. And he does some insane things. He's bulletproof. He's super strong. Breathes fire. Create electricity with his hands. So he's probably a cool thing for Iron Man. Uh, so Iron Man goes to fight him. Doesn't succeed. Pretty awesome fight, though. Gets hurt. The only way he figures he can fight him is if he fights back with the Extremis. And he goes into this coma-like state. More like a cocoon-type state, because he forms a cocoon. And he flashes back to when he was in... the When his heart was damaged and when he was... Uh, becoming this first attempt to becoming Iron Man and they one thing I loved there's two things I had to say I love how they updated it um, they changed it from him being in the Vietnam during the Gulf War from being in well they changed it from Vietnam to being in somewhere that could be Afghanistan which is pretty up to date good on be keeping up and you see him get the armor, kick ass with it. And I love this, that I know people who hate Origins. This is a good way to do Origin flashbacks. Especially if it's a reboot or a, uh, yeah, or, or, you know, just a reboot of a movie franchise. You don't have to do the Origin right up unless it's been, like, decades. Unless that character is that known. You're, you do this in Superman. If you ever do a Superman movie, uh, if you want to tell the Origin, all you need to do is a shift from Krypton. But that's a different... Shift from Krypton, he has superpowers, learn to go to Smallville. That's all you need. You don't need anything else. But that's different discussion. So after that, he gets his new suit. The one thing they made apparent in before he gets this new suit is the suit he had previous, he had to ship in a giant crate. Because it becomes so heavy and technical that he has to ship it in a crate. As opposed to in the 70s, where it was kind of corny then, but he could fit it in, in a briefcase. Honestly, briefcase sounded easier. And the idea of technology is it's getting smaller and smaller, not bigger and bigger, larger and more complicated. So the idea of the extremist program made sense. And the idea is he's essentially become a supercomputer. And they're using it to their advantage in uh, the current series. Um, at least in the sense of like the idea that he's a supercomputer and that he dumps his memory... Tony's currently brain dead in a way he's a vegetable trapped in his own mind and he could do sorts of things too he can talk to phones, hack computers with his mind he has a magnetism ability and I know a lot of people are against this because it gives him superpowers I consider it more that he has like a huge, the suit gives him these super abilities so I, in the, it's basically what's the suit in his body so I don't consider that he has physical superpowers that's me I, you people can all just say you're a moron. He has superpowers, but I don't. 
I don't care. People call me a moron as it is. <laughs> Odds are. And he goes fights. He goes to fight Malin again. And kills Malin. I know that's a big spoiler, but I usually put spoilers in here anyway. And he... Because he's not in any other Iron Man books. If he was, it'd be insane. Uh, he's too damn powerful. He'd be like Doomsday. <coughs> so, overall... Let's talk about... Well, not overall. Let's talk about the creators first. Warren Ellis, he's well heard in the comic book industry. He's done... On the superhero side, he's done... See, I think he's currently doing Astonishing X-Men. He's done some... I don't know, Wolverine a long time ago. He... He's done Thunderbolts. He's done Next Wave. He has a lot of indie stuff, too. Check that out. He... In the... He did a good job here. Admitting that he didn't read many Iron Man comics, he did a good job of getting Tony and understanding the story. Uh, Arnie Greenoff, he's only been around for a few years, and he doesn't do much. He's... If you can tell by the art, definitely... If you ever see his art, or you can see by the covers I put in the video, it's very detailed, so interiors aren't frequent. I know he's done some backup stories, uh... I have a Spider-Man trade where uh, the new ways to die, he did like a little Venom backup. But it's mostly just covers. That's it. And um, it's good to look at. Overall, I love it. I love how, uh, I love how Iron Man's portrayed. I love... I love the fights between him and Balan. They're pretty cool. Uh, I love the concept of extremists. The story was very interesting and intriguing. The art was beautiful to look at. There was pages that just made me go, wow. I wish this guy did more. His covers were really great to go get to. I gotta give this a 9 out of 10. I don't know why. It, the story was interesting, but I don't think... It didn't keep me up to giving the whole thing at... 9. Well, if I could divide it, it's like a 4.5 on both sides. The art, there were times where the panels looked a little odd... But the whole digital thing kind of works. I mean, it's a great book. Pick it up if you haven't yet. If you've just seen the movie, definitely pick this up. Peace.